Hello learners, I am Dr. Neetu Shukla and today we will be discussing some of the reasons behind the non-achievement of the goals of universalization of elementary education. Education as you must be knowing forms the base of all types of human development and progress. It is meant for enabling the child to live a worthy life and realize the goal of self-actualization. Its goal is all-round development of personality, be it the head, heart and soul. It aims to nurture life skills, attitudes, values and knowledge required to live a meaningful life. Towards this objective, Government of India has recently made education as one of the fundamental rights of uh, each and every child. National and international initiatives for universalization of elementary education are also geared towards this goal. You know that universalization of elementary education makes it imperative and compulsory to make education available to each and every child in the country irrespective of his or her caste, creed, religion, ethnic group, gender and socio-economic status. In 1990, the Jomsian Conference, it called for a strong and substantive efforts towards this goal. Following which, 10 years later, World Conference in Dakar in 2000, it witnessed the national assessment of over 100 nations to the goals of universalization of elementary education. Have they been achieved? If they have not been achieved, then what is the reason behind it? And it was found that the goals were not achieved in many cases. The reasons were many, differing from nation to nation. Let us explore some of the reasons in India. One of the major reasons behind the non-achievement of universalization of sick elementary education has been a population explosion. You know the speed at which this population is increasing. It is actually exceeding the rate of development. And that is one of the reasons why education of universalization of education has not been possible. Among other reasons, population, when it is expanding, when we try to find out what are the reasons behind it, then some of the reasons are the illiteracy that is there amongst the masses, the beliefs and myths which they are holding, the gender issues. The second main point or the second main reason behind the non-achievement of universalization of elementary education is poverty. Poverty is one of the root cause why most of the parents, most of the poor family, they are not able to send their children to school. Education which seems too convenient to many of us is actually a luxury for them. They are not able to send them to school. Although government and international bodies, they have provided for so many advantages to them that free education will be there, free schooling will be there. But we must not forget that the day a child is enrolled in a school, a number of other expenses are included in that. The home expenditure increases. The child has to commute to the school. He has to reach the school. He has to dress up appropriately every day. He has to maintain that dress. And amongst others, there are so many other daily health and hygiene issues. Owing to all of these things, many poor families, many families, though they are very much interested in getting their child educated, they are not able to send them to school. Apart from this, we should not forget that in poor families, they want each and every member of the family to earn. So once they send a child to school, they find that one of the earning members of their family is reduced. Another major reason why we are not able to achieve UEE is agriculture-based economy of our country. Now due to poverty and in absence of modern technology, children are often engaged in the fields along with the parents as they are physically more agile, they are more active, they are more flexible. That is another reason why they are pulled out from the schools or never ever enrolled in the classrooms. Another major reason for not achievement of UEE is communication gaps. If you look at our country, it is so vast and it is so varied. It has multiple regions. It is beautiful, it is scenaric. Everything is good. But there is communication gap. When we go to the remote hilly areas and the tribal areas, we find that locating a school in those areas, providing for the basic amenities of teaching learning material, providing the teachers and all these issues, it becomes really, really difficult. And there is no easy access to education. Even the local agencies and NGOs are also not able to help much. Now many tribal children in our country, they are not able to enjoy the benefits of multiple initiatives taken by Government of India in conjunction with international organizations such as UNFPA, UNESCO, DFID. 
The reasons are again many. One of the main reasons is that the tribal child comes from a unique culture. He has a unique language. And the moment he enters a school, the day he steps into a school, he encounters a totally different culture, a totally different language. There is a vast difference between the home language and the school language. This creates a major hurdle, a major tussle, lots of anxiety among the children. Many a time it demotivates the child to go to the schools, to attend the classroom. Another major reason is the content. The content of the school curriculum, many a time, it is something which is beyond the comprehension of these learners. The tribal child comes from a very rich cultural background. But in the textbooks, he finds that his culture is not always presented in a beneficial manner. As a result, he finds a difference. He is not able to realize how far this content which he is studying in the school will help him in his actual socio-economic context. Now the language and background of the teachers who are teaching these schools. Many a time the teachers themselves are struggling and they are coping with the syllabus, coping with the needs and aspirations of the group of the target learners who are coming to them. They are not able to identify themselves with the values, needs and aspirations of these children. There seems to be a mismatch. And obviously it leads to a psychological problem. The teachers and learners are not working at the same plane. The socio-cultural needs and aspirations of the tribal communities are also many a time not fulfilled by the schools. Children many a time when they are coming from tribal families, they find it difficult to cope with the daily routine of the school, of sitting in the classroom, of reading content, of following the instructions of the teachers and not to forget the evaluation procedures, the various co-curricular and curricular activities. So all this creates a major problem for them to cope in the classrooms and that is another one reason why many a time they are forced to drop out from the school. Another very crucial reason is the negative attitude, negative attitude of the community, negative attitude of the family of these learners. Many parents still they think that the children who are educated they will not be able to get a suitable employment and they blame that the education system will actually force them to be of nowhere. They will not be able to go and work in the field because they are educated and at the same time because they are educated they will not be able to get a good job. This negative attitude is another major hurdle in the process of the realization of universalization of elementary education. Now motivation is another factor which has lent itself to the non-achievement of universalization of elementary education. Although the government gives incentives to the school-going children such as free education, books, midday meals, scholarships and other facilities, still proper motivation is lacking among parents to send their children to the school. If we look at the Maslow's hierarchy, you will find that on the base, the most important need which needs to be fulfilled is the physiological need. Second need is the security and then we go up higher to love and belongingness. Unfortunately, in most of the schools, these needs are not being fulfilled. So how can we expect our learners who are coming from such backgrounds to cope with the daily requirement of the school? Another important factor that we are facing in the non-achievement of universalization of elementary education is the frequent dropouts, wastage and stagnation. We often experience that even if the children are enrolled in the schools, they drop out due to various reasons. One of the primary reasons is physical environment of the school. How will you feel if the room in which you go and sit for your class is leaking from above or if you have mats which are torn, if you don't have proper seating arrangement, if you find that you are sitting with people, with children who are of different age groups. All these physical factors, they impact the motivational level of the learners. Another factor which is contributing to the dropout rate is the teachers. The teachers themselves are many a time not qualified. They are not aware of the socio-economic status, the socio-economic context, the rich diversity of the learners in that local context. So they are not able to relate the curriculum with the local needs of the learners. Besides this, many a time the teachers themselves are demotivated. They are not happy teaching in the classroom without teaching learning material. They are not happy if they find that they have to deal with multiple age groups at the same time. So this need has to be fulfilled. The lack of teachers has to be addressed. Another crucial factor is the curriculum. 
as we discussed earlier in the case of tribal learners, if the curriculum is not related to the needs and aspirations of the target group, they will not be intrinsically motivated to attend the classroom, to read, to try to understand, to try to comprehend what the teacher is saying, what the curriculum wants to focus on. Consequently, their achievement, their achievement gets affected. And if their achievement gets affected, then whole lot of chaos comes out. The society, the parents, everybody pressurizes the child that you are not able to perform well. So you might as well quit. You might as well join them in some job, in their business. So this factor that the curriculum is not addressing the local needs of the group is also leading to dropouts, wastage and stagnation among the learners. Repeating a class again is not a motivational thing for the learners. Lack of awareness ignorance is also contributing to the non-achievement of universalization of elementary education. Many of the parents don't realize the importance of education in human life and it is only out of ignorance they don't get their child enrolled in the schools. What do you think education is meant for? Why do you think we go to school? Just for marks? Just for ending up in a job? No. When we are going to a school, we are learning so many things, not just knowledge, we are also acquiring understanding. We are also acquiring education in our emotions, emotional maturity, emotional development, our values, our life skills, everything we are able to understand. When we are there with our peer group, when we are there with a person who is carefully looking into our development. So the learners, when they find that the parents are not very clear about what is the objective of school education, they try to disengage their learners, their children from the school. Education is for mind, body and soul. Many a time, learn, the parents, they feel that the education in the school is actually aligning them from their culture. It is leading them to uprootedness and it is not guaranteeing job. So because of these conceptions also, the parents discourage their learners, their children to go to school. Another very key factor which the Indian society is struggling with is gender biasness. We still find that in many cultures, many communities, girls are not being given equal rights. They are not being promoted. They are not being allowed to go to school. They are not being allowed to attend classes, participate in all the activities wholeheartedly. We should not forget that when we educate a girl, we are actually educating a family. The rate of women literacy is lower than the rate of male literacy in many cases. Gender biasness is predominant and education is required to make this myth of gender stereotyping break. Many a time the girls are found to shoulder the responsibility of helping their mother in routine work and also to look after the younger brother or sister. Although the government has taken several initiatives such as they have opened up Aganwadis and Balwadis where these small kids they can be kept and the girls can go and attend the school. Still, the families, the communities are not promoting education of the girls. Lack of stability in life is also one major factor contributing to non-achievement of UEE. There are some tribes and nomads who are always wandering. They are homeless. They move from one place to another in search of livelihoods. Now the children of these laborers, of these nomadic tribes, they lack stability. As a result, they are not able to attend classrooms. They are not able to go to school. They are not able to get education appropriately. Thus we have seen that of the several factors that we have just gone through, population explosion is one of the things which is very much related to poverty. It is again related to the school factors and so many other factors which are leading to non-achievement of universalization of elementary education. So if we want our nation to progress, if we want the goals of UEE to be realized, we have to ensure that we provide equal opportunities for universal access, universal enrollment and universal achievement of the learning goals. Thus today in this session, we have seen the various reasons behind the non-achievement of universalization of elementary education in our country. These need to be addressed if we want to provide for equity and equality of opportunities to all our learners. If the goals of universal access, universal retention and universal achievement has to be achieved, we have to ensure 
that we provide for education in the right spirit. We have to ensure that the masses are educated about the need to control population. We have to ensure that the community is motivated. The negative attitudes of the families are removed through counseling, through various sessions by government agencies, through community support. In case of tribal schools and tribal learners, the community should come up and they should provide more participation in the translation of the text, providing glossary to the words which is known to the learners in that local language. They have to make the teachers work in sync with the community so that the local resources are harnessed in the transaction of curriculum. The teaching learning material which is being prepared by the teachers, let the community members join hands in enhancing the quality of the school education by providing for the gaps which are there in the curriculum and which can be easily filled if the teacher and the school and the community, they engage in a partnership so that the overall development of the children happens. To add to this, we should also understand that when we talk of universalization of elementary education, minimum levels of learnings have to be achieved. Now these minimum levels of learning to be achieved should not lie only with the school authorities, with the teachers, with the teaching learning material, with the curriculum and the policy framers. The community, the society, the social, cultural atmosphere, everything should be geared towards this achievement. They should come up, they should suggest ways in which the local needs and aspirations can be met. More interaction between the school authorities, the curriculum framers and the community should happen so that they can find out what are the practices that they are engaging in, what are the practices and values which they want their learners to carry forward. And the curriculum and the school, they can work towards organization of those activities which will carry forward the social structure, the values of that particular community, so that the feeling of uprootedness is not there, so that living, the values, the life skills are taught and transferred to the learners in the right manner. Dear learners, with this I conclude this session and we will meet again in the next session. Till then, thank you.